Hey y'all, let's look at uh, the product rule of variables. And the first part, let's go back to something that we did before. Um, what is the answer to this? We have eight to the 12th power times eight to the sixth power. Well, what is the answer to that? And we know the answer is eight to the 18th, right? Because if we strung all these eight to the 12th power, eight times eight times eight, 12 times, then we multiplied by a to the six, six times, we'd see 18 of those a's multiplied together. That's why we do it. It's not 72, we don't multiply. We add them together if we're multiplying those variables, okay? Um, let's look at this. If this is true, if can you add 12 and 6? Of course you can. That's just 18, all right? So if you look at something that looks more complicated like this, this really isn't anything complicated. It's just an addition problem. That's all you're doing. Can you add, uh, you know, numbers with different denominators and variables? Sure, you've been doing it for a couple of years now. So all we're doing is we're just looking at these small uh, uh, exponents as if they're, you know, addition that you're going to add fractions with variables and different denominators in. So all you need to do, of course, you know, pause it and copy it if you need to first, is do the same thing. In other words, if this were this problem, if you said x to the 10th, y to the, I don't know, 5th, uh, x to the negative 13th, and then y to the, I don't know, uh, negative 8 or something like that, you would look at this and go, okay, well, I got x to the 10th, 10 plus negative 13 is negative three. Okay, I got y, uh, five plus negative eight is also negative three, and oh, there we go. And of course, you could write it if you want to, you could move these down and go, that's gonna be x to the third, y to the third, and just have a one on top. So you know how to do that already. All we're doing is just doing the same thing and having this kind of weird looking, uh, you know, fractions for exponents we're having to be doing. So let's just go ahead and do this first. Let's write this this way. We'll have x to the of course, I don't need to write 10 plus negative 13 gives me negative 3. I just did it, right? But let's just write it this time. I have an x there and an x there. So this is going to be x to the a plus a over 2, okay? All right. Well, can we add a plus a over 2? In other words, if you were over here and you, somebody said, hey, here's the problem for you. Add this. You wouldn't, you'd go, oh, no big deal. I got it. Yeah, so common denominator is 2. So that'll be, uh, let's see, 2a over 2 plus a over 2. Ah, that's going to be 3a over 2. So that's all you do here. This just becomes an x, and the very I mean, uh, exponent, excuse me, will be 3a plus, uh, excuse me, 3a over 2, not plus anything. And that's it. Okay? And you did exactly the same thing to the y. Exactly the same thing. So you have a, oops, you have a y here, and we'll just put the y there for a second. And you have a 2x and you have a 3x over 4. Well, you know, again, you can just, if you just solve this, 2x plus 3x over 4, you'd have no problem doing that at all. You'd just go, okay, multiply by 4. 2x times 4 is 8x. So really, I have 8x plus 3x. So I have 11x over 4. That's my answer. Well, that means that's your variable. I mean, yeah, the exponent, I keep saying variable. That's your exponent. y to the 11x over 4. And there you go. And that's it. Since there's nothing you can do with the X and the Y to get them together, you just stop right there. Okay? All right, let's try another one. Copy that down. You know what? You don't need to copy this down. Forget it. You know how to do this, right? Okay. If Let's go ahead and simplify for X. X negative 2 is up top. What can you do with an X to the negative 7? Move it up there, right? If you move it up there, it turns into X to the positive 7, right? If you move this up here, it turns into Y to the positive 5. Then you just go, okay, I got it. That's going to be x to the 7 minus 2 is 5, y to the 10th, and there you go. And, of course, if you wanted to write it with negative variables, you could leave them down there or whatever you wanted to do. Okay. So, same thing. If you can do that, <laughs> you can do this. It's very similar. You just do exactly the same kind of thing. All right? So, copy that down. Take a second. All right. Well, let's do the x's first. Okay. Well, again, you're just going to take this. If you're dividing, you're just subtracting, right? So you'll have uh, x to the a minus 2, and then you're, you're going to say minus a over 2. Okay? All right, and you'll have the y, and you start out with a plus 4, and then you will subtract 2a, like that. Now the y is probably a little easier. Let's go ahead and do that first. We have an a and we have a negative 2a, so that gives us a negative a. 
You know, of course, we could just say we have a 4 and then a minus a. We could do it that way if you want to. Or you could say negative 4 plus a. That doesn't matter. This is a little different. Uh, let's get the a's together. And this would be, well, let's, let's do it over here. In other words, if you had this over here, you kind of reckon there's an a there. There's an a here. We can go ahead and go ahead and uh, write that this will be 2a over 2. And this will be minus 1a over 2. And then that would be just plain old a over 2, minus 2. Okay, and you can leave it like that if you wanted to. X to the a over 2 minus 2. Or if you wanted to go ahead and just make this into a common denominator, you can say, well, that's going to be over 2, and that will be, get that up to a 4. So this would be x to the a minus 4 over 2, and then y to the 4 minus a. There we go. Okay, same kind of thing. All right. Not too complicated. Once you keep in your head, all you're doing is when you're dividing, you're subtracting. When you're multiplying, you're adding. And you know, if the concept is the same with integers, it's the same for fractions. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. Okay. All right. Let's go do something like this. Let's, what's the answer to this part right here? What is x to the twelfth power brought up to the sixth power? X to the seventy-two, right? Because if a power you raise a power to a power, you multiply those. All right. How about this one? What's this going to be then? It's going to be 2a times 5, right? Or 10a. Okay, there you go. All right, those are pretty straightforward. If the concept works for that, then the concept works for ones like this too. Not that big of a deal. So go ahead and copy that down. You have x times, or excuse me, x to the a plus 2 power, and the entire thing gets raised to the second power. So all you have to do is just go, well, there's my x, and then these two, you're simply going to multiply. So you have 2 times a is 2a, 2 times 2 is 4, and that's it. There you go. That's all there is to it. Okay. All right. Let's try this one. This looks a little more complicated, but it's the same exact concept. So take a sec, copy that down. All right. Well, again, you, you know, you're just a power to a power. You're just going to multiply here. So first off, you're going to have x to the a, b power. Uh, y, you're going to have y to the, and then you're going to go ahead and multiply a times b plus 2. So you'll have a, b here, and then you'll have a times 2 there. Okay, of course, this is also divided by x to the negative a power. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and go put that up there. That's going to turn into x to the positive a power, if you want to write it like this, x to the positive a. Since we have an x here and an x there, uh, the old rule comes into effect. In other words, don't forget, if you had x to the 5th times x to the 7th, the answer is x to the 12th. So you're just going to add those, right? Well, that's exactly what you're going to do here. So it's going to be x to the ab plus a, and then you're just going to keep your y to the ab plus 2a the way it is. And there we go. Okay. All right. Try the practice set. Try a first. Go ahead and pause it. We'll come right back. Okay, well, let's take a look here. We have an addition problem. So if you want to just do over here, I have m plus m over 5. That's my addition problem. Well, you know, the common denominator is 5. Multiply by 5. So 5m plus m is 6m. <clears throat> so what we have, actually have here is uh, x to the 6m over 5. Okay, and our a, we have 3x plus x over 2. And if we use a denominator of 2, then we multiply by 2, so we have a 6x there. So 6x plus x is 7x, so we have a to the 7x over 2. There we go. All right, pause it and try b. All right, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to move the uh, m up. So I'm going to have an m to the a minus 2 times m to the negative a over 3. I'll just, you know, I'll, well, you know, I'll just do both of them at the same time. So we have a, then a p to the a plus 1 times a p to the negative 2a. All right, so let's work on the m's first. <clears throat> Again, this is just a, an addition problem. So we have a minus 2 minus a over 3. So if you want to go ahead and let's just make the uh, 
denominator is the same for the a. So we'll make that into a 3a over 3. So let's get these two together. I have 3a over 3 minus 1a over 3, which gives me 2a over 3, and then minus 2. There you go. And if you wanted to go ahead and get those both together, you could go ahead and go, okay, that's going to be over 3, and that'll be a 6. And we could call that m to the 2a minus 6 over 3. And that's the weird fraction exponent you got there. Okay, this is the same thing. We've got an a, we've got a plus 1, we've got minus 2a. Well, you know, I mean, a minus 2a is negative a. We've got a positive 1 there, so I'll just put the positive 1 first. So it's p to the 1 minus a. There you go. Okay, and there we go. All right, see you guys next time. All right, I almost forgot here. We got C. So let's go, to, do, the, go do the same thing here for C. We have M to the uh, X times Z, since it's a power to a power. Then we have a Z to the, I mean, you can think of this as just a one there since there's nothing there. So this is gonna be Z to the M plus three. And you'd like to move up the M here. It becomes M to the positive X. All right, so, you know, I, there's really no, not a whole lot to this at, at this point. We have m to the xz plus x, and then we have z to the m plus 3. And there we go. Okay, that actually did do it this time. See y'all.